I'm not ashamed. Are we only to follow the weightier matters of the law? This is the question we seek to answer today as we continue our verse by verse study of the book of Matthew on walking through the Bible. Is worth the glory of his cross. If you have a Bible with you, you can turn to Matthew chapter 23. We're going to be reading from verses 23 to 28. If you don't have a Bible, don't worry. Just follow along with us on the screen. The version that we'll be reading from is the New King James Version. So, Matthew chapter 23, beginning at verse 23. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! For you pay tithe of mint and anise and cumin, and have neglected the weightier matters of the law, justice and mercy and faith. These you ought to have done without leaving the others undone. Blind guides who strain out a gnat and swallow a camel. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! For you cleanse the outside of the cup and dish, but inside they are full of extortion and self-indulgence. Blind Pharisee, first cleanse the inside of the cup and dish, that the outside of them may be clean also. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! For you are like whitewashed tombs, which indeed appear beautiful outwardly, but inside are full of dead men's bones and all uncleanness. Even so you also outwardly appear righteous to men, but inside you are full of hypocrisy and lawlessness. In this chapter, Jesus pronounces seven woes on the scribes and Pharisees specifically, and one extra woe that is meant for them, but he didn't call them out by name. For the discussion of the first three woes and that extra woe, we refer you to Lesson 114 in this series. All of this brings us to the fourth woe Jesus pronounces on the scribes and Pharisees because they pay tithe of mint and anise and cumin, but neglected the weightier matters of the law, justice, mercy, and faith. Under the law of Moses, the Jews were required to give a tenth of the products of their land to the service of the Lord, especially since the Levites did not inherit any land, yet still had to eat. The plants that Jesus names are small plants, and you wouldn't gain a lot of money by selling them, yet the scribes and Pharisees were very careful that they turned over a tenth of even these small plants. They did similar things with other smaller matters about the law. Yet when it came to the weightier matters of the law, matters that concerned the heart, like justice, mercy, and faith, the scribes and Pharisees were indifferent. They are blind guides in this because they would strain out a gnat, a small unclean animal under the law, from their juice in order that their juice wasn't unclean, but didn't realize that they were swallowing camels, a large unclean animal under the law. This was hyperbole on Jesus' part, but it makes his point nicely, which was you need to follow all of God's law. Note here that Jesus didn't say that they should not worry about the small things and only focus on the weightier matters of the law. He said that they should do both, something that is true for us as well as we serve Jesus by faith under the law of Christ today. The fifth woe Jesus pronounces on the scribes and Pharisees is because they clean the outside of the cup and dish, but inside they are full of extortion and self-indulgence. Jesus uses a figure of speech here to talk about the condition of the scribes and Pharisees' hearts. On the outside, the scribes and Pharisees looked religious, yet their heart was far from God. It's like washing the outside of the cup but leaving the inside dirty. Since the inside of the cup is where the contents go, having the inside of the cup dirty will defile your drink. Jesus was saying that the scribes and Pharisees needed to focus on their hearts and cleanse their lives of sin by following after him. And when they did that, the outside of the cup would take care of itself because when we wash a cup properly, the whole cup will be clean. Which brings us to the sixth woe, the final one that we'll look at in this episode. Jesus pronounces this woe on the scribes and Pharisees, for they were like whitewashed tombs which appeared outwardly beautiful, but inside all you found was dead men's bones and all uncleanness. It was a custom at that time to whitewash the sepulchres, which would be noticed by those who passed by. These sepulchres looked good on the outside, but inside what did they contain? decaying bones. In other words, what was on the inside didn't match the beautifully contained outside sepulcher. Such again, the life of the scribes and Pharisees is like that. Outwardly, like, they looked God, like godly men, but their hearts were far from God. Their hearts were decaying just like dead men's bones. This is a lesson that we all should take to heart. God looks at our heart, and if our heart is not right with God, then he will not accept us. People spend time and money to make our bodies look good. We buy, we buy nice clothing. We get perfume to make us smell good. We style our hair. We cut our nails, etc. Yet people spend very little time sprucing up the condition of their heart. They don't read their Bibles, let alone follow it. 
They don't have time to worship in the church with the saints, nor even spend time outside of the assembly with them. They are what we call Sunday morning Christians. Sure, they look the part, but their lives are not conformed to Christ. We will not be saved with this attitude. We will be in the same condition as the Pharisees, lost and on the road to hell. While we have time, though, we can still repent, change our hearts, and live a godly life, something I urge all viewers to do before it is everlastingly too late. With that, our time is up for today. The Lord willing, we hope you'll join us for tomorrow's discussion of Matthew 23, verses 29 to 39, as we continue our walk through the Bible, one verse at a time. I'm not a Thank you for watching today's episode. We hope that you found it edifying and ask that you not only subscribe to our channel and podcast, but that you like and share this episode among your friends so that the saving gospel of Jesus Christ can go out to the whole world.